Hi, I'm Ben Barris. My topic for today is how to pick a graduate advisor. So I'm a professor of neurobiology at Stanford University, where I've had a lab for about the last 20 years, and where I've been lucky enough in that lab to be not only doing research, but also mentoring uh, terrific young scientists. These are usually PhD students and postdoctoral fellows. Uh, and so what I'd like to talk about today is the importance of picking a graduate advisor who's not only a good scientist, but who is also uh, a great mentor. Now, the bottom line of what I want to tell you is that you want to do two things. You want to pick a graduate advisor who is an excellent scientist, who is also a great mentor. So let me take those in turn. First of all, how can you, as a beginning graduate student, find an advisor who is an excellent scientist? After all, the whole point of doing a PhD is to learn how to recognize and do great science. And you're just a first-year graduate student, so how are you going to be able to select an advisor who's a great scientist? Well, there's several different uh, methods that you can use. I suggest them all, and I've listed some of them here. But picking an excellent scientist is not sufficient. You need to also pick an advisor who's a great mentor. Now, that's a little trickier. Uh, to, to figure out. And this is the step where many young scientists uh, sometimes are not as sophisticated uh, or mature in selecting their advisor. Uh, and uh, I think that this is uh, something uh, that you need to think a lot about and uh, make uh, in making your choice. So how can you tell whether your advisor uh, is also, a uh, potential advisor is also a good mentor? Well, here's a few tips that uh, you can consider trying. Very importantly, there's something called a trainee's list. Each advisor prepares a list periodically for NIH, and particularly it's submitted with training grants that your department may use, your graduate uh, PhD program may use to help fund uh, the training program. Uh, each advisor periodically prepares a list of all the trainees, all the PhD students and postdocs that have ever been in their lab. And then also on that list, is what that trainee, that previous trainee, is doing today. Do they have a lab at a university? Are they a successful scientist uh, at, a, at a good pharmaceutical company? Uh, are they working still in science uh, in other great jobs, like being journal editors, uh, or working at NIH uh, in the review process, and so forth? There are many great jobs that scientists can decide to take. You want to make sure that you're choosing a mentor who is uh, not only a good scientist, but is training their students to be successful in their careers. And by and taking a look at the trainees list is a really good way to take a look at over the, the advisor's career, you know, what percentage of their students have gone on to be successful in science and actually get the kind of job that you aspire to get someday. Now, it may be a little awkward to ask your prospective mentor for a copy of their trainees list, although I I've had students ask me for my trainees list, and I'm always delighted when they show the maturity to ask for something like that. But you could also just simply go to your PhD uh, department uh, headquarters office, the main office, and uh, ask for a copy of their most recent training grant. And you will find in that training grant uh, a list of the trainees list uh, for all of the uh, potential advisors that you may be considering. So I would strongly suggest taking a look at those trainees lists. Next, you can also talk, once again, to senior scientists who you know, including your PhD program director, uh, about uh, the training track record of the advisors you are considering. If you're considering several different labs, you might speak to senior scientists and say, well, how does the, the, the training track record compare for each of those labs? And then, again, listen to what they're telling you. Um, uh, you can actually even PubMed their trainees. And you can figure out who their trainees are, by and large, by looking at who have been the first authors on papers over the last 10 or 20 years in their lab. And then you can actually PubMed those authors and see, now that their previous trainees have their own laboratories, are they actually doing great science in their own laboratory? So by, pub by PubMedding their previous trainees, you can find out uh, whether they're going on, in fact, to do successful science. And then most importantly, something that I strongly advise you to always do when you're considering uh, joining a, a lab of a particular scientist is to speak with some of their current and past trainees. And then you can ask these trainees 
what do they think about that lab? Is that a good lab? Is good mentorship, in particular, is good mentorship happening in that lab? And here are some of the questions on the next slide that you can be asking them. These are the sorts of things that good mentors do. And you can ask their previous trainees and assess, for example, as you do your rot rotation in, in those prospective labs, whether the mentor is going to be doing these sorts of things. And there are many, many things that a good mentor needs to do to help you. Keep in mind that when you do your PhD thesis or your postdoc uh, in a lab, this is essentially a period of apprenticeship where you're going to be working very closely with a senior scientist uh, to learn uh, how to do research successfully yourself. So there are many things that they're going to need to teach you. And therefore, uh, uh, they're going to also need to be able to spend a lot of time with you. Um, well, uh, one thing that a good mentor does is help you to form good intractable questions. This may actually be the most important thing that a good mentor does. Because it's very hard as a young scientist, after all, you're only going to have a few years uh, to do your PhD. Um, you need to have a tractable, a tractable starting point, And it takes a, a period of training before you learn to recognize for yourself what's a good question that's actually tractable in the several, several year period uh, of your PhD thesis. Having picked uh, a good uh, question to work on for your thesis, next uh, you're going to need to talk to your mentor about how to design good experiments. What sorts of experiments should you do? You'll come up with some ideas yourself, but you need somebody to toss them around with and sort of uh, suss out whether those are good ideas or whether those experiments might tweak a little bit to be even better. A good mentor helps you to do that. The best mentors also help you to become increasingly independent over time. They may start by giving you some guidance, but as you build in confidence and independence and knowledge, you'll be able to increasingly come up with your own questions, design your own experiments, and so forth. And a great mentor will let you do that. And very importantly, a great mentor does not micromanage you. And by that, I mean uh, a great uh, mentor resists the uh, ever-present temptation to tell you exactly what experiments they think you should do. Because if you're always being told what to do, number one, it won't be as much fun. And uh, number two, you won't learn to develop your own instincts about what is a good experiment. And, and I could say here, that uh, one of the most fun things that I found in running a lab is uh, talking to students and uh, hearing their ideas and seeing the sorts of interesting experiments that they come up with. Now, a great mentor, very importantly, does not expect you to always be in the lab, slaving away every minute uh, over test tubes and so forth, doing experiments, but understands that you need to do some other activities that will also enhance your training as a young scientist, you need some teaching experience, perhaps TAing courses. Perhaps you'll take some summer courses at Cold Spring Harbor or Woods Hole or uh, other places like that to learn more about science in a different setting and in a different way than you might be uh, learning in your own lab. And uh, definitely, you need to be allowed to attend conferences to present your work and interact uh, with other scientists. Um, and so good mentors uh, make sure that students have the time and the ability to do those things. Another thing that good mentors do is they create a very happy, interactive, uh, and diverse lab environment. And I mean diverse in all ways, diverse in terms of gender uh, and race, and also knowledge and backgrounds of the different people entering the lab. And also creates a happy environment where people are not directly competing with each other, but rather are teaching each other and helping each other uh, to be successful. Another thing that good mentors do that takes a lot of time is they need to spend time with you teaching you how to give a good talk, how to write good papers, how to prepare competitive grant applications, review papers, and all the things that you're going to need to do someday when you're running the lab yourself. And even after you finish your PhD thesis in their lab, a good mentor is going to support you for the rest of your career. They're going to help you to get opportunities as a young scientist, uh, to give talks and seminars and to get grants. And all of these things are things uh, that a good mentor will do. Uh, but it takes their time, and it takes some generosity on the mentor's part. Uh, a good mentor uh, really gives until it hurts. And so uh, I think this is a, a personality characteristic. Not all people are created equal in this regard. There's very different styles of mentorship. And you want to look for a mentor who is going to do all of these different things uh, to help you along your uh, training period as a PhD student. 
okay, now there are some things I want to urge you never to do. And I've listed here three very common mistakes that many first year graduate students make in choosing a lab. Don't make these mistakes. Most important is number one. I have found that universally, and I was certainly no exception, but universally, students have this idea when they enter graduate school about some very specific research topic that interests them, and they cast about looking for a lab that works on this one little thing uh, that they want to work on. Now, this is always a mistake, because that is not the way you should be picking a lab. Uh, in any university that you go to, there are going to be many great mentors, but they may not all work on the one little thing that you want to work on. If you pick a good lab, if you pick wisely and you're mentored well, you will get all the, the skills and abilities that you need that someday when you're in your own lab, you'll be ready to work on any topic uh, that happens to interest you. Now, another mistake that I'd like to caution you about is never to pick a lab just because the PI uh, is a Howard Hughes investigator, or is a Nobel Prize winner, or a National Academy of Science member, to be sure all of these things are great indicators that the lab, uh, it, the advisor you're considering is probably a great scientist. But remember, being a great scientist is not enough. You also want to make sure that the lab is a lab where great mentoring is happening. And then lastly, and especially, especially I address this target to women, never pick a lab because of the gender of your advisor. I know that many women in science are looking for mentors as role models, and of course this is very important, but that is not a sufficient reason to pick a lab uh, uh, to do your PhD thesis. First, pick, uh, make a list of labs where you think the advisor is a great scientist and a great mentor, and if in, on that list is a woman and you have a desire to go work in the lab of women, by all means, then choose that lab. But first, they must be a good advisor and a good mentor. And most importantly, maybe this is the most important thing I'm going to say today, I think that doing science should always, always feel like fun. You should select a, a mentor who has a sense of fun about science, who is passionate about doing science, passion about science radiates uh, from them when they talk to you about science. Uh, one thing that always gets in the way of having fun is if you have a mentor that's telling you how many hours to work. I've heard many stories where mentors are telling students, you should work, you know, 60 hours a week or something like that. I have never in 20 years ever told a student how many hours to work. If somebody told me that, that would completely take the fun out of it. I think that all you can do as a mentor is take good students into your lab, give them opportunity, uh, guide them gently, um, and, and, and then the rest should come from them, and it should be, it should be a feeling of, of having fun to come to the lab. Okay, and uh, very importantly, doing great science at any stage in your career should never exclude having a life. I have many students and postdocs in my lab over the last 20 years. They've all had active labs. Many of them are married or have boyfriends and girlfriends. Uh, have had babies while in my lab, either as PhD students or postdocs, have had multiple babies. Uh, all of these things are part of life, and there's nothing about doing science that excludes having a great life. If you're in a lab where the mentor does not appreciate that, you are in the wrong lab. Okay. Most importantly, being in the right lab should feel every day like being in summer camp. When you wake up in the morning, you should feel like you can hardly wait to get out of bed and go to lab. If you're in the right lab, it's going to feel like that. Okay, well, I've, I've told you a lot of things today about how to pick a good graduate advisor. I've told you that you need to find an advisor who's not only a great scientist, but who's also a great mentor. Uh, and you may be worried uh, that by the time you do all that, that there may only be one person in the entire university that fits that descript description. Nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, there are many great scientists who are also great mentors at every single uh, major university in this country, and uh, every school has, has many great mentors. Your job, if you want to be a successful scientist, is to pick one of them. Thank you very much.